Hey, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to migrate your WordPress website from one host to another. We're going to be rolling up our sleeves and doing this the manual way without any plugins straight inside cPanel. This video will help if you're moving hosting company or if you're moving your site from a development environment to going live. Let's get started. Okay, so for this tutorial, there's going to be a few things that will be helpful to have ready before we begin. We're obviously going to need a WordPress website to migrate. We're going to need access to your current WordPress hosting cPanel. You're going to need a new hosting WordPress cPanel. And we need access to your domain name so we can edit some DNS records at the end. So now that we've got that covered, let me explain what we're about to do and how we might want to do this rather than using a plugin. Generally speaking, if I'm migrating a website, I'd be doing it with a plugin, something like Duplicator. But sometimes you've just got to do it manually, you've got to get stuck into cPanel, um, and it's always useful to know how to do it this way too. So as you can see, we're in cPanel now, and what we need to do first of all is get a backup or make an archive of our files. Now, you could do this by going into FTP, getting the files that way, or you could, if you know how to do it, log in through SSH, make an archive of your files, and then download them that way. Uh, but for this example, just to keep things easy, we're going to do it straight through cPanel. Now, this might look familiar to you, or your cPanel may have a different theme. But generally speaking, you can just do a search here for File Manager, and that's what we need to deal with first. So click on File Manager. So when you open up File Manager, the first thing you do is make sure that you know where your WordPress files are sat. So, so for this installation, I know they're sat inside the public HTML folder. You may find that they're in a subdirectory in there as well. Sometimes you'll find a subdirectory in here, something like www.yourdomain.com. But for this one, mine are directly inside the public HTML. So for me, I'm gonna go back to the home and I'm gonna create an archive of my public HTML. So if I right click here, compress, I wanna zip archive, compress files. So depending on the size of your website and depending on how fast your hosting is will depend how quick this is. As you can see, that hasn't taken too long. So now we've created a backup of all our files we can close this. And as you can see here, we've got a zip file of our public HTML. Doing it this way also ensures that we capture all hidden files. So we make sure we've got all the files we need to work on our new host. So what I'll do next is we need to download this file. So if I click download, just save it on my desktop. Again, depending on the size of your backup, depending on the images you've got, depend how long that's going to take to download and then for good housekeeping once i know that backup has been downloaded i'm going to delete this zip file now it's important that you double check that you are deleting the zipped archive of public html and not your actual public html so this one as you can see it's dot zip so i can delete this one i'm going to skip trash confirm so now we know we've got a backup of all the files of our WordPress website ready to upload to our new host. So we've got the files, now we need a copy of the database. So we can close this, and go back to our host. Now you may find that you've got multiple databases. So it's important to double check that we're gonna download the correct database. So in this case, you can look at MySQL databases. We can see uh, I've only got one, so I know it's the right one. But if you have got multiple databases, it's important to double check that we're going to download the right one. So what we need to do is head back to Tools. In your File Manager, you can actually open up Public HTML and look at your WP Config file. So if we click that, View, and if you scroll down, you'll see here DB Name is here. So we know which one we need to download to work with these files. We can now close this, close the file manager. Now we need to go to PHP My Admin. This will take a second to load up. Once you've got that open, you need to select the same name database on the left-hand side. So you can see here, we've got industrial friction dot underscore IFM. So we've selected the database on the left-hand side. And as you see along the top, you'll have some options. And what we're interested in now is to export. So we need to export the database. We've got the format as SQL and we want a quick export. So if we click go, again, it'll ask us to save it. So I'm going to save this one on my desktop. It's got the name of the database, save, and we're done. So we've now successfully got a backup of the files and the database from our development or our old hosting. Job done. Right, so now we need to log into our new host, cPanel, and we need to upload the files and import the database. So to move things along quickly, I'm now inside the new hosting account for this website. And I just need to redo the same processes, but instead of downloading, we need to upload. So for this example, as I said, we need to go to File Manager. 
Once we're in File Manager, we want our files to go inside the public HTML and we can click Upload. We can select our directory and we want to select our public HTML that we've downloaded and open. And as you can see, this is uploading. This is a very small website, so this shouldn't take too long. So you can see this is now completed. We can return to our public HTML. As you can see, we've now got a, inside our public HTML, we've got our zipped files. So the first thing we need to do is we need to extract these files. So we need to right click extract. And at this point we can remove the public HTML and extract the files here. And as you can see, the files and directories are now of that WordPress are in their new home in the public HTML. So we're job done. We've got our files. Next, we need to import the database. So we can close this. So first of all, we need to create a new database. So we can go to create database. And uh, we can call this whatever we want. Create database. Create a user. So I'll put anything in here. Generate a password. So we'll just use that one. create user and we'll need to give that user the privileges for this database so if we scroll down add user to database give all privileges make changes and we're done so now we're ready to import our database so if we scroll down hit php my admin now we're just doing exactly the same as we did earlier we select our database in php my admin and we want to import this time instead of export so we click import we need to choose our file and then this is the file that we downloaded. We want to open it and click go. And now all our tables will be imported to the new servers database. And as you can see, import has been successfully finished, 151 queries executed. Now there are a few things to bear in mind here. The first one is if you're moving from a development environment to a live environment, it's likely that the URL of the website is changing. So we need to make sure that the database has got the new name of the database. So what we need to do for that is we need to, on the left hand side here, once you've got your tables, you need to click WP options. Your database tables may have a different prefix, but by default, WordPress uses WP underscore but if you've added some security or you've decided to change it to something else, you may find that it's something else. But whatever you've got, whether it's WP or something else, we need to go to the options. So once you click on options, you'll see that the first two entries are the site URL and the home. Now, if your URL is changing, we need to make sure that we've put the correct new URL in here. And if you double click on it, you can enter whatever you want here. And then do the same here. You need to enter your new home URL there. But obviously, if you're just moving to a new host, these aren't going to change. So you can just leave them as they are. Now, one important step now is that we need to take the new password and details of our database and update our WordPress files to ensure that the files are actually checking the correct database. So we need to head back to File Manager. And if we click on Public HTML, and then we need to scroll down to the WP config file and we can right click and we can edit this file. We just want to edit. And then we need to make sure that we've got the correct database name, the correct database user and the correct password. Now we need to enter the new password and the user that we created was DD and the database was the same because it's uh, the same domain was registered by cPanel. And you can just check this by, if you flick back to your databases, MySQL databases, you can see here the database name and the database user. And then we just need to save those changes. Okay. We can close that window. So now the new files will use the new database as opposed to, you know, looking for the old one. So in, at this point, we've now got two identical clones of our website running. We've got one on our old server and we've got one on our new server. Now, updating DNSs can take, you know, up to 24 hours, generally a lot less, but, you know, it can take 24 hours. So it is advisable for you to be able to tell the difference between the two versions of the website. Now, 
if you have updated the URL, this is clear cut. There's nothing that you need to do because obviously you can access it via the new URL and via the old URL. But if you're moving host, it's sometimes difficult to know which version of the site you're looking at, whether you're looking at the new one or the old one. So one little thing you could do is just so you know which one's which is just add a full stop or period at the end of the blog name and enter. So just one subtle change so that we know which version of the website that we're looking at. So if I've updated the live version to have this full stop at the end. So I know if I see that, I'm looking at the new version of the website on the new host as opposed to the old one. The next step is to update our domain's DNS records. Now, before we do that and make a permanent change, um, one thing I like to do is to test it locally first. And we can do that by updating our host file. So what we're doing is we're just tricking our computer to think when it goes to www dot whatever your domain is going to be, that it's going to the new server as opposed to going to the old one. So everybody else going to your website will see it still on the old server, but we can trick your machine to thinking that it's looking at the new server, and then we can test to see that everything has been successful, the transfer, the migration has been successful. Now. I'm going to be doing this on a Mac. I'll leave instructions below in the description for how to do this on a Windows machine. But on a Mac, we need to open up our terminal. So if we open up terminal, let's clear that. Okay, so in order to edit our host file, what we need to do is type in sudo nano atcme. So once we've got our host files open, we just need to go back to our new cPanel account where we can get our public IP address. So in this case, we've got 80.66.201.184 and we can tab across and enter the domain name. Now we can also add another DNS record for our www. Right, so now we've got two entries and we just need to save that. So on a Mac, you click Control and O, which will write the file and then Control X to close it. Now there is one more entry that we need to do, which is to clear our Mac's DNS memory so that we can actually access the website. Now in order to clear the DNS on your computer, I'll put these commands in the description so you don't have to remember them, but you need to type in sudo kill all hup um, DNS responder enter and it'll ask for your password for your computer so you enter that in and now the DNS has cleared on your computer so at this point to the whole world that are going to your website they're still accessing it on your old hosting so that's fine nothing's been affected by them and then if we want to open up a, brow a private browser on our computer just to test what this website looks like and whether the migration has worked. We just need to open up a new tab. And then if we type in the address, you'll see that you'll get an SSL issue at this point, but don't worry, that's something that we'll manage once the migration is completed and we've updated our DNS records. Because at the moment, auto SSL is unable to verify the domain because it's still pointing to your old server. So, but as you can see, we're now on, um, or we're now looking at the website, which looks identical to what it did look like on the old server. But we know that we're on the new website because if we hover over the title here, you can see it's got home, pipe, industrial friction materials with a full stop because that's what we added on the new one. So we know that we're looking at the new website and we can just test the website to make sure that we're happy. Yep, yeah, everything looks to be as it should be. So all good. So I'm at a point now where I'm happy that the website is performing as it should be. The migration has been successful. And now we can go and update the DNS records of the domain so that everybody else in the world can get to see the website that has been moved to the new hosting. Now to do this, you just log into your domain name provider and need to update the DNS records. And now, depending on who where your domain is, will depend how you do this, but generally it's pretty much the same. So for me, we've got our domain stored in Cloudflare. So we're going to log into Cloudflare to update our DNS records.
And then we just need to search for our domain. And then we can click on our DNS records. So as you'll see here, there are two records that we need to update. So we've got industrial friction, which is the root of the domain, and we've got a WWA record as well. So we would just need to edit those so that they're pointing to the new server's IP address. So for example, I would click edit, and then I would put the new IP address in there for, you know, the new server, the one that we put into our local host file. Now, I'm not going to actually do it for this domain because I was doing this all as a test to, just to create this video. But once you've saved the new DNS records, it can take anything from 5 minutes to 24 hours for your new website to appear. Now, the great thing about this is that if you are moving from one server to another, no one's going to know any difference because some users over that period will be going to the old website and some users will be going to the new website. But a good tool in order to check the progress of your um, DNS updating is if you open up Google and you search for what's my DNS, this website here will allow you to enter your domain. And it'll return the IP addresses of your website. So you can clearly see whether it's pointing to the old server or the new server. So yeah, hope that helps. So just one thing to remember to do before finishing this tutorial is we need to head back to our um, host file and log in. And we just need to comment out these. And you can comment out the entries by adding a hash symbol before the IP address. And then just click Control O to save and Control X to exit and then flush your DNS again. So because I didn't update the DNS records in Cloudflare um, and we've now removed the host file record from our host file. You see that the page is loaded. It's got the padlock and we can see from the site title that the full stop has now disappeared. So we're now looking at the correct version of the website. Yeah, so hopefully you found the video useful. If it did and it helped you, then please give it a thumbs up. If you want more WordPress tutorials or tips and tricks, then, you know, make sure you subscribe and leave a comment below requesting any videos that you'd like to see next. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. See you on the next one.